Hey friends, welcome to my video on lead acid battery sizing. In my previous video, I had explained how to estimate the battery load cycle. Link to the video is given in the description of this video. Once a battery load cycle has been estimated, we can start calculating the number of cells and the capacity of the battery. Lead acid battery is sized as per IEEE 485. The major factors governing the size of a battery are the maximum system voltage, the minimum system voltage, various correction factors, and the most important thing, the battery load cycle. Let us now understand how to calculate the number of cells of a battery bank. Let us consider nominal system voltage is 110 volts. And as the nominal voltage of a lead acid battery cell is 2 volts, therefore the number of cells required for this particular system is 110 volts by 2 volts is equal to 55 cells. Accordingly, it has been a common practice to use 12 cells, 24 cells, and 55 cells for nominal system voltages of 24 volts, 48 volts, and 110 volts respectively. However, this method doesn't allow for effective utilization of the battery capacity. Accordingly, a more accurate method utilizing the voltage window is followed for calculating the number of cells of a battery bank. Let us now understand this method. Electrical equipment are designed to operate properly within a voltage window. Batteries should be selected accordingly. The upper limit of the voltage window should allow for battery equalizing or boost charging. Whereas the lower limit of the voltage window should allow for the maximum usage during discharge. Accordingly, number of cells can be calculated as maximum system voltage divided by cell voltage required for equalizing. Lead acid batteries usually operate between 1.75 volts per cell and 2.33 volts per cell. Assuming 2.33 volts per cell is required for equalizing and the voltage window is 105 volts to 140 volts for a 125 volt battery, we have number of cells equal to 140 divided by 2.33 which is equal to 60.09. So, let's say we select 60 cells. Minimum cell voltage can be calculated as minimum battery voltage divided by number of cells. So, minimum cell voltage in our case is 105 volts divided by 60 cells is equal to 1.7 volts per cell. The number of cells calculated by this method allows for the widest possible range of the voltage window, resulting in the maximum number of cells. It may also be noted that narrower the voltage window, larger the battery capacity has to be. Also, the use of widest possible voltage window within the confines of individual load requirement results in the most economical battery. It may be also noted that more number of cells result in the lower end of discharge voltage, allowing for more efficient capacity utilization and least expensive battery.
Before proceeding to calculate the cell capacity required for a particular installation, we should consider the additional factors that will influence the cell size. These factors are temperature correction factor, design margin, aging factor, and the initial capacity. Let us now understand each of these correction factors in detail. Temperature correction factor. This factor is considered to take care of the variations in performance of the battery at different temperatures. For the battery, as the operating temperature increases above 25 degree centigrade, the electrochemical reactions in the battery is enhanced. The capacity available increases, but the life of the battery comes down. While at cold temperatures, the electrical capacity at lower temperature is lesser due to sluggish electrochemical activity. The battery performance decreases at lower temperature and this must be accounted for with correction factors. The standard US temperature for rating cell capacity is 25 degree C or 77 degree Fahrenheit. Battery capacities and discharge ratings are published by battery vendors based on a certain temperature, usually between 68 degree Fahrenheit to 77 degree Fahrenheit. Batteries should be sized for the lowest expected temperature. At higher temperatures, use the rated capacity for 25 degrees C. For lead acid batteries, temperature correction factor is applied at the end of the calculations. For our case, let us consider a minimum temperature of 5 degree centigrade and accordingly a temperature correction factor of 1.3 is selected. Design margin. It is prudent to provide a capacity margin to allow for unforeseen additions to the DC system and less than optimum operating conditions of the battery due to improper maintenance recent discharge or ambient temperatures lower than anticipated or a combination of these factors. Typically design margins are selected between 1.1 to 1.15. A method of providing this design margin is to add 10 to 15 percent to the cell size determined by the calculations. This allows for operation at lower than expected temperature and it also covers for less than adequate maintenance. If the calculation requires a 220 ampere hour battery and the next standard higher cell size of the manufacturer is 250 ampere hour, the 30 ampere hour difference is a 13 percent margin already designed in. Any additional margin of 10% might not be required in this case. Aging factor IEEE 450 and IEEE 1188 recommend that a battery be replaced when its actual capacity drops to 80% of its rated capacity. Therefore, to ensure that the battery is capable of meeting its design load throughout its service life, the battery's rated capacity should be at least 125 percent that is a aging factor of 1.25 of the load expected at the end of its service life which means that the initial rated capacity of the battery should be at least 125 percent of the load expected at the end of its service life Initial capacity. Batteries may have less than rated capacity when delivered. Unless 100% capacity upon delivery is specified, initial capacity may be as low as 90% of the rated capacity. This will rise to rated capacity in normal service after several charge discharge cycles or after several years of float operation. If, however, the designer has provided a aging factor of 1.25 then there is no 
need for the battery to have full rated capacity upon delivery because the capacity normally available from a new battery will be above the duty cycle requirement. But when an aging factor of 1 is specified or used, the designer should ensure that the initial capacity on, upon delivery is at least 100% or that there is sufficient margin in the sizing calculation to accommodate a lower initial capacity. For example, if the cell has 90% initial capacity and the margin is greater than 11%, then there is no need for additional compensation for initial capacity. This concludes part one of my video on lead acid battery sizing link for part two of the video is given in the description i hope you enjoyed this video if you would like to see more such videos on electrical topics please subscribe to my channel and share with your friends and colleagues